Hello scholars, my name is Dr. Kara Stillen and the goal of this channel is to make academic subjects easier to understand. In the last video, we looked at attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. In this video, we're gonna look at specific learning disorder from the DSM-5. In order to be diagnosed with specific learning disorder, these individuals will have difficulty learning and or using academic skills. They'll have at least one of the following symptoms, which will be present for at least six months. The first symptom is an inaccurate or slow trouble with reading, or it takes a lot of effort to read words. Reading words out loud tends to happen incorrectly or slowly. They may guess at words or have difficulty with sounding out words. Number two, they may have difficulty understanding what has been read. They might be able to read, but they're not sure what they have read or the meaning of it. What are the relationships in it? What are the inferences or the deeper meaning of what is being read? Number three, they can have difficulties with spelling. Number four, they may have difficulties with written expression, which means grammatical errors, punctuation errors, um, poor paragraph organization, written expression, or even lack of ideas that ba basically they lack clarity with their ideas. Number five, difficulty mastering number sense, number facts, or even calculation. You don't seem to quite understand what numbers, what the relationship is that they have with one another. And then number six is difficulty with mathematical reasoning. Um, they have trouble with applying some of the mathematical concepts together or just basic mathematical facts or procedures. They have a lot of trouble with solving mathematical problems. So when these kids are tested, um, they're usually tested against those of their grade level. And what happens is the affected skills tend to be much lower than those of the chronological age that they're being compared to. Um, this can often interfere with their academic life as well as their occupational life later on. Also with just basic daily activities. We will usually look at standard achievement measures, which are clinical measures to kind of use that as one sort of item to compare and contrast them with other students. Learning difficulties like this tend to begin during the school age years, but don't tend to manifest until they hit that specific skill area that they have trouble with. So they may not be found until third grade or fourth grade. It just depends upon the skill level that the child has. Um, maybe they have trouble with time test or with reading lengthy reports or pronunciation of the reading. There's all sorts of different times and styles and issues that can come up. The learning difficulties are not better accounted for by intellectual disabilities. So it's not because of an auditory issue or a visual issue that if that can be corrected, it will suddenly correct other things. These skills are, these problems that are there are going to be there no matter what. So it's important when working with a child that has a specific learning disorder um, to really try to decide and identify what sub-skills they need to work with that are impaired. Um, and it's normal for more than one domain to be impaired at a time, but you can code these certain sub-skills so that uh, people can know what they are and what they're working on. We do have criteria and we label things like three 3.15.00 might be impairment with reading, 3.15.2 might be impairment with written expression, 3.15.1 would be impairment in mathematical um, in mathematics in general, and then we will look at these and determine whether they are mild, moderate, or severe. If, if you're really wanting an understanding of it, 
talk to a reading teacher or talk to somebody who works with students within these sub skills to help them. Um, teachers have an incredible way of explaining it and, and ways that you can help the student to advance. Each impaired academic domain and subskill or specified learning disorder needs to be recorded, and it needs to be recorded using the ICD coding. Now that goes along with um, medical coding, because if your child is going to get help for something, they have to have it coded so that they know um, how the help will be paid. One essential feature of specific learning disorder is persistent difficulties. These, these are not subskills that can easily go away. This is something that needs to be worked over time and worked with consistently. It just takes these children longer to get these skills um, taken care of. Usually the problems come with key academic skills, whether it's reading or it's math. It could be anything from reading single words accurately to reading fluently or full reading comprehension, written expressions, spelling, um, math or math calculation or math reasoning. I am a teacher. I've been a teacher for 19 years. I've worked in the public school system for 10 years. And when we do standardized testing, these are exactly the categories of things that we're looking at with these children. And we can basically have on the side, this is this is math. These are basic facts of math. This is math understanding. Um, this is relational math. They're all kind of categorized so we know what our students need assistance or more help with. Now, when students have difficulties learning, let's say they have mathematical reasoning problems. Um, yes, we can be aware of that, but um, there's always only so much time that we can spend on different things. So the more that we have a parent-teacher relationship or a clinical relationship involved, the better, the more access the student will have toward help. These, again, it'll be a very persistent and restricted progress in, in learning, but the more help um, the child can get, the better. The difficulty with a specific learning disorder is that the longer that this remains an issue, the more effect it will have over the child's school, academic work, their social um, relationships with one another, and eventually their occupational um, success. So we really try to hit a lot of these specific learning disorders early in life. Okay, well that is the end of the video. If you liked the video and you found it helpful, please click that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Let others know about these and that would be great. Thank you very much and I will talk with you soon.